Welcome back. It's been another great response this month. Over 650 calls so far, and they are still coming in, and quite fast. Some of those calls have been really quite exciting. The biggest response, it seems, has been on the hijack of the security van in Staffordshire. But there have even been 20 more calls with information on the Rachel Nickell murder we featured last month. Sue. Well, first, the murder of Hampshire schoolgirl Helen Gorry. It wasn't unusual for 15-year-old Helen to go out visiting her friends quite late at night. And shortly before midnight on Friday the 31st of July, Helen left her house. Oh, I won't be long. Where are you going? I won't be long. Helen's body was found the following day by guests at a wedding party in the grounds of the local community centre. Doug Quaid, what sort of response have you had? What sort of calls? A bit disappointing, really. Yes, we've had over 70 calls. A lot of them have been nominations for the ginger-haired man. We haven't had a single call from anybody who featured in the reconstruction, which is disappointing. Mm. In particular, who was the girl that got into the escort-type car? We haven't had a positive sighting of Helen, which again is disappointing. Neither have we had any of the teenagers from Murchiston Hall contact us. This is a murder inquiry, and it's vital that these people do call us. Right. Uh, the most important thing, isn't it, to get sightings of Helen after she left the house at half past 11? It's absolutely crucial to us that we know what Helen did after half past 11. And if anybody saw her or knows anything about what she did after then, please call us. Mr. Mr. Quaid, thank you very much. Jackie, on photo call, James Kenneth Cunningham, a New Zealander wanted by the extradition squad at Scotland Yard, seems to have just dominated proceedings. Yes, in fact, over 80 calls have come in now, um, some from police officers, most of them locating him in the South London, yes, sort of Surrey so. area, um, although if uh, anybody knows where he is now, or even Mr Cunningham, if you're watching, please come and see us. Indeed, there was uh, somebody who thought that they saw him on question time a few minutes ago asking a question, but uh, we don't think that's the man. No. What about the theft of the £12,000 Rolex from uh, a shop? Yeah, again, over 30 calls, so we're very excited. And there's one call in particular about one of the suspects that the, the officers are very keen on, so perhaps good news later. The Rolex itself has been seen by five people advertised in a paper in Brighton. Um, it's got a black so face, awesome. unlike the one that we're showing here, but otherwise it's identical. It is, and uh, what makes it unusual is the uh, serial number, 200698. If you've seen it, ring us. Thank you very much. We asked for your help to identify an armed gang which robbed a Group 4 security van at the little Staffordshire town of Purton during August. In the course of the raid, the gang used a distinctive white van which was marked with the name Protec. Right, gentlemen, now to the uh, Protec home. It's a Camden 610 Fiorino, 1,650 pounds, 1,650 pounds once, 1,650 pounds twice. Sold the last time at £1,650. That's uh, Protec having uh, ceased trading. That van was bought at, in auction rooms at Meesham in Leicestershire in March. What sort of response have you had, Derek Baker? It's been absolutely excellent. We've had over 200 calls. Some of them are really interesting calls. Quite a few have been about the uh, chap who bought the car at the Meesham auction. Uh, we've had some names to go with the photo fit, uh, which is very encouraging. We've also had many calls about sightings of the van in the, in the triangle that we're interested in, which runs between Nottingham, Litchfield and, uh, and Hinckley. So we're very well pleased. Um, what we're still lacking, though, is um, someone telling us about the P and the R it was replaced and the 558 of the telephone number. And that's one thing we really would like to, to know about. You really think a professional repairer yes, or sign writer yes. would, would know about yes. it? And you're quite sure, really, then, that the men who committed this robbery may well live in that triangle, well, Leicestershire, there's, Nottinghamshire. There's something about them which places them within that triangle. Whether they live there or not, we don't know, but there's something about the triangle. Let's uh, hope you get some more calls. If you can add anything, please do. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, now that series of assaults in Milton Keynes, these are nasty crimes, probably caused by just one man, but upsetting the whole community. An enormous number of calls, in fact, probably rivalling the, the, the Purton robbery in, in number. How many so far? We estimate uh, in the region of 200, Nick. We had 100 back at Milton Keynes and uh, just under 100 here this evening. Now, this is despite blanket publicity that you've had locally in any case. Yes, it's surprising because we've given a lot of publicity locally for this offence, but a lot of the uh, information that's come forward has come from the people in Milton Keynes. And good information? Good information, yes. Uh, in particular, we had a call from a, a prison officer who recalls releasing a man with uh, previous offences of, of sex 
uh, into the area. So a lot of interesting calls to follow up. A number of the ones that you've got on your desk here have been marked you know, very confidential by people who are obviously putting themselves out and, and you know, they've obviously struggled with their own consciences in some cases, giving you names and addresses of people they may even be related to. Yes, it's very encouraging. It's, it's good the members of the public can uh, put for information for us. Okay. Well, let's hope we get somewhere, Mr. Bowne. Thank you. Thank you. Well, David, uh, how are we doing on incident desk? First of all, the burglars who attacked a man on his doorstep in Dartford in September. Yes, we've had over 20 calls on that one, Sue, and another one's just come in here now. Several offering names for the EFIT that we showed. One in particular who's been dealt with for similar crimes. Sounds very interesting. Another one that I've just got links to one of those, to a white Nova, which was possibly connected with the attack that we need to eliminate anyway. A couple of callers mentioned the naval dress sword that we were looking for. Uh, remember, we're looking for one with the initials PFG on it, so officers are hopefully going to check that one out that's been called about. And another man thinks he bought one of the paintings that were stolen at an auction. So there's plenty to follow up on that one. That's quite promising. And what about the abduction of the woman motorist in North London? Yes, over 70 calls there and they're still pouring in. Remember, we're trying to identify where the attack took place. And we've had a caller who's given us lots of details that fit the criteria that we mentioned earlier in the programme. So that might well tie up there. We've had suggestions for the artist's impression that we showed. Uh, one from a prison officer about a man with a very interesting history. And so that one sounds good. Two separate women have called who've been approached by a man in the same area uh, of Finchley and one of them today. So we're fairly optimistic there. Some good new leads there. David, thank you. Finally, the murder of Michael Towler, a charity worker who was stabbed to death at his home in Bradford. Yeah, right. Go on. Hey! Inspector Fitzpatrick, actually, this has been the disappointment of the evening in many respects, hasn't it? It has rather. We've had several calls. In fact, the vast majority of calls have been about the video. We've had no calls about sightings of Michael on the night of Wednesday the 5th of August. Now, let me explain that the video is a video cassette recorder that was stolen from his home the night that he was murdered. And you know that because the TV was heard on earlier and was disconnected after his, his death. So I'm going to take That's it right. away. We can definitely establish that the video was there on the night he was murdered. About 50 callers say, I'm, there's one on the top here, I think I've purchased that video. You're only interested in people, if they saw the earlier programme, who might have bought it around Burnley, West Yorkshire area and in the last two months since his death. Yes, in the Bradford or West Yorkshire area, uh, extending possibly to Burnley, uh, but it must be in the last two months. Now, you thought that the murderer could well be someone who had a gay relationship with Michael. That's actually proved a, a very barren area to try and get calls on. We've had no calls from people who knew Michael or said they had any kind of association with him. We do have a number of people who are unidentified at this time who were seen by the neighbours. We would ask these people to come forward as well. OK, Mr Fitzpatrick, I uh, hope it improves. Your luck. Thank you. And that's it from us for this month. Although the lines will be open for another quarter of an hour or so, if there's anything you feel you can add to tonight's cases, please call. The police and incident room numbers will be rolling up on your screen in just a moment. We'll be back here in a month, and with any luck by then, at least some of these cases will be solved. So don't have nightmares. Do sleep well. Good night. Good night.